Picking the right panel is crucial for your project and there are many things that go into that decision, including location, building design, local codes and requirements, look, and more. Today, we are taking a look at the SMI inch and three quarter snap lock panel and learning about its application, engineering, installation, and when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI inch and three quarter snap lock standing seam profile. It's a standing seam snap lock system, which means it's installed with hidden clips and fasteners on the male leg and the female leg snaps on to engage the panel. It has a maximum 18 inch panel width when it's formed with steel and a maximum 16 inch panel width when it's formed with aluminum. You can use 22 gauge to 24 gauge steel or 040 aluminum. If you use the same material in a heavier gauge or a narrower width panel, the engineering is still valid. This panel uses approximately six and one eighth inches of material to be formed. When it comes to slope, snap lock profiles are intended for steep slope applications. There are hydrokinetic systems, which means they must shed water quickly in order to remain weather tight. Most snap lock profiles have a minimum slope requirement of a 312, but the SMI inch and three quarter snap lock is like the inch and a half 550 snap lock panel in that due to the ASTM E1646 water penetration testing, SMI allows it to be installed at slopes as low as a 212 based on certain conditions like location and building design. The reason it does so well in testing is that it has a continuous locking mechanism on the male leg down the length of the panel, as opposed to other snap lock systems that only lock onto the clips. We talk about engineering a lot because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best chance possible to perform. For the inch and three quarter snap lock profile, there are eight UL90 construction numbers but there are also a variety of engineering specifications from tests performed in a laboratory by Sheffield Metals. The SMI inch and three quarter snap lock panel has been tested in steel and aluminum over plywood, BDEC, and BDEC with ISO for UL580 and 1897 uplift testing, ASTM E1680 air infiltration testing, and ASTM E1646 water penetration testing. The panel is also rated for class four impact resistance through UL2218 and can be used in a class A fire rated assembly via UL790 testing. For projects located in Florida or Texas, the panel holds both FBC and TDI approvals when using steel over plywood, BDEC, and BDEC with ISO. This panel is eligible for use in weathertight warranty projects through Sheffield Metals and qualifies for the standard SMI 40-year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. Some upcoming testing for Sheffield profiles includes finishing HVAG approvals for Florida, upgrading some non-engineered profiles to have testing, and doing even more testing on current engineered profiles. Stay tuned for updates on those. This panel is a good choice for mostly commercial projects with slopes at or above a 212, when you don't want to use the extra labor to seam panels as it will save you some money, when you want an engineered system or if you're interested in a commercial weather type warranty. Don't use this panel at slopes below a 212 if you think the boxy ribs might look too industrial or bulky or for buildings where the seam height might be too large. If seam height is an issue, consider the SMI inch and a half 550 snap lock profile. Next, let's look at how this goes down on a roof. Make sure to follow the engineering guidelines as to what deck substrate you can install over, proper clip spacing, approved accessories, and other additional requirements. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend, but if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, there's a couple links in the description. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned on the box end with a couple fasteners, and uses approved snap lock clips on the male leg. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave and snaps in place. It gets pinned as well, and the process repeats across the roof. The tab I left on the female leg is optional and for aesthetics only. You definitely don't have to do it and it doesn't affect the performance of the panel. Because the panel is only pinned at the top and it snaps in place, it can expand and contract as needed at the eave. 
The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. Details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com and those details are recommended for both commercial and residential projects. This profile is probably the most architecturally specified panel profile in the industry. And if you wanna know more about this panel or other panels that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.